let's go to the room and delete the enemy we added here. Now, to dynamically add the enemy here in the screen, we need to use an abstract object, an object that contains no sprite. So we're going to make a game controller. We're going to the objects folder. Let's right click here, select create object. And we're going to name this obj underscore game underscore controller. And we're going to use no sprites. We just hit OK now, so it is saved here. And to make sure it is going to run, we're going to our room and we're going to choose in the object to add with left mouse, we're going to choose game controller. Now we simply click here on the top left of the window just to make sure that it is going to run. Okay, I added to the room but in a place you can't see just so it can run. Okay, the code can execute. Now, let's make the logic for spawning these enemies. We're going to the game controller here. Let's click on add event and we're going to use create. Okay, I'm going to drag a code block here and let's make a comment. We're going to type here initialize variables because we're going to write a few variables here for the game controller. First of all, we're going to use spawn underscore timer and we're going to set it to be zero. We're also going to use spawn underscore duration and we're going to set it to be uh, 40. Okay, we're going to start with 40. We're also going to declare minimum underscore spawn underscore duration, which is going to be 20. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a bit different than what uh, than with what we did with the bullet cooldown. Okay, we used actual milliseconds, but for the game controller, we're going to use steps. We're going to use frames as a count. Okay, it's just another technique for you to see how it works. So. We set a timer that when it reaches zero or less than zero, it's going to throw an enemy in the game. And we set the duration. This is going to be the duration it's going to go back to. So when you spawn an enemy, the timer is going to set to duration and then the timer is going to move down. And we're going to change this duration so the game gets harder over time. So we're going to decrease this every time we spawn an enemy but we have a limit here. We set a minimum spawn duration that we're going to use 20. So the minimum is going to be 20 frames. Okay, so let's go back to game controller. We're going to click add event and add a step event here. We drag another code block. Let's add a comment here, spawn enemies. So we're going to use to type here spawn underscore timer minus minus. This is the same as saying spawn underscore timer equals to spawn underscore timer minus one. So we're getting the value we have on spawn timer. We decrease one and we store the result of this operation in spawn timer. So that just means that spawn timer is going to decrease one at a time. So if spawn timer is at seven, it's going to be six. When it's six, it's going to be five and then four and then three, two, one until it reaches zero and it is time to spawn an enemy. Now we're going to type here, if spawn underscore timer is lesser or equal than zero, then we open and close curly braces. This is the time we're going to spawn an enemy. So first of all, just so you don't forget, so you don't spawn enemies like crazy, you have to type spawn underscore timer equals to spawn underscore duration. Okay, we are resetting the spawn timer to be what we set in spawn duration. Now we're going to type spawn underscore duration minus minus, so we decrease it at one. Okay, next time an enemy is spawned, it's going to be one frame uh, faster than before. And now we have to check if the spawn duration is not uh, below the minimum amount we defined. So we're going to add a second if block within this one, and we type if spawn underscore duration is lesser than minimum underscore spawn underscore duration and if that is the case then spawn underscore duration is going to be minimum underscore spawn underscore duration so it's going to stick to that value whatever it is okay and now we need to make the actual instantiation of the enemy so to do that let's go to the room okay and let's add uh, an enemy we're going to choose here we click around and there we go have an enemy Notice that here in the objects tab, you have a position, you have X and Y. You can use these values to help you spawn the enemies. So for instance, I'm going to put an enemy here. It is in the position 800. Okay, so they're always going to, to be spawned in the position 800 because this is the limit of the screen. 
and the y position is going to to vary between 0 and 640 which is the size of the screen okay the enemies they spawn on the right side of the screen and they can appear from whatever vertical position we want okay we're going to use a random position here okay so let's delete that we're going back to the game controller in this tab event and here we're going to type instance underscore create x position is going to be fixed in 800 and the vertical position is going to be the result of a function call we're going to use i random and pass 640 as argument i random is a function that whatever number you pass there you're going to receive a random number between 0 and that one so if we type i random 10 for example we can get the values 0 1 2 3 until 10 but when we use 640 we're going to have 0 1 2 3 until 640 it's going to be a random number so random numbers are good so your game keeps interesting over time okay it's not going to be always the same and finally we're going to use here obj underscore enemy okay so let's give this a try let's click on run the game now and wait for uh, the project to be saved for the code to compile and after everything is ready for us we should be able to see these enemies so we have one two and the enemies keep spawning okay and they're coming after the player and of course you can change how frequently they're going to to spawn by just changing how quickly the duration is going to decrease uh, what is the minimum duration then what is the, the initial duration as well so you can tune how this game is going to work Okay, so now it's going to be interesting to add a very simple interface just to say uh, that the player can uh, just shoot the way through the enemies and survive as long as they can. Okay, let's do this in the next video. Adding an interface is very simple in GameMaker. We're going to the Fonts folder. We right click on it and select Create Font. We're going to have the Arial font as default. So let's type the name FNT underscore Arial. In size, let's use 20 and mark as bold so it's easier to see, but you can choose whatever font you want, size and settings. You can just check this, this around and, and fiddle around with the numbers to, to configure this as you wish. Okay, we click OK to save. And now in the game controller, we're going to click here on add event. We're going to go to the draw event and choose draw GUI. And now we're going to drag this code block here and we're going to call three functions. We're going to use draw uh, underscore set underscore font and we're going to pass FNT underscore Arial as an argument. Okay? Also, we need to set the font's color. So we're going to use draw underscore set underscore color, and it's going to be C underscore white. Okay. So these, this is a constant that's going to store the value for the color. If you type C underscore and then wait or just press control space, you're going to see all the color constants, all the suggestions that you can use here. So for instance, if you want to use orange, you can just, instead of white and white here, you can just type orange and the text is going to be orange. And finally, we're going to use draw underscore uh, text. Then the first argument is going to be the horizontal position of it. We're going to use 10. We're going to use 10 as vertical position as well. And finally, we're going to, to type in a string, which is enclosed by the double quotes. We're going to say that destroy the enemies and survive. Okay, so destroy the enemies and survive. We close the double quote, we close the parenthesis, and we add a semicolon. So now we're going to click here on run the game. So the project is saved and everything is ready for us. And when the window opens, we should be able to see the interface. And that's it. Destroy the enemies and survive. So this should be it for this video, but there are several things you can do here. Try getting what you did for the... The, the cooldown logic we added for the, the player shooting to add a time limit to this game. Maybe you add 30 seconds to this game and that time is going to appear in that interface and after you survive for the 30 seconds then you win the game and it's going to restart. 
okay and you can also add different enemies that move at different speeds okay so you might have some surprises here so some enemies are going to to come faster and you have to react fast enough to destroy them okay and you can even tune the cooldown logic so uh, the player has a bit more difficulty on shooting and also another thing you can add is add health points to the ships so you make a variable called health and every time you collide with uh, an enemy the enemy's health decreases by one and when the health reaches zero then the enemy is destroyed okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you want to see more you can go to mammothinteractive.com for more courses for game development and programming and that should be it okay my name is Glauco Pires. thank you very much for watching and i see you next time